Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 God is in the house. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're in for a great treat this morning. Why? Because our God is here. And when our God is here, he treats us. Amen. Amen. Do not the children in your household get treated. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. So therefore, as the children of God in our house this morning, God is going to treat us. Amen. He's going to treat you. Amen. He's going to treat me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We just sang a song about a mountain moving God, yes? yes? Amen. If you have a mountain in your life this morning, God is going to move it. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I've been doing a series on blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Oh. Yes. Hallelujah. You are blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. You know, it's so great that we serve a great God. You know, he rules and reigns. Therefore, we can rule and reign in every situation and every circumstance. He has all authority. Therefore, we have all authority. Mm. The problem is, I'm not sure we all exercise that authority when we should do. Mm. Our God is a God that has given us everything for us to accomplish all that he asks us to do. Therefore, the Bible tells us that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. But first of all, we have to receive so that we can be givers. But we are to be givers. Why? Because if we are not givers, we stop the flow. Amen? We are supposed to be a flow from heaven through us as a blessing to others. So therefore we have to make sure our channel, if you like, our body, our temple of the Holy Spirit is free from incompetence, from things that hinder, things that stop the flow. Amen? When we deal with those issues, when we deal with those things that are in our life that shouldn't be, then we become that channel that God can use and flow through to the blessing and glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Okay. When we started this series, I started on the blessings in chapter 1 of Peter. And they were the blessing of election, the blessing of the new birth, the blessing of the living hope, the blessing of inheritance, the blessing of protection, and also, and this was the one that some of us perhaps struggle with sometimes, the blessing of persecution, when we are persecuted or when we suffer for Christ. But it is a blessing, so the Bible tells us. Hallelujah. And also, one of the great ones is the blessing of grace. Amen. Amen. We've been saved by grace, are being saved and will be saved when Jesus comes back again. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Then on number two, the other week when I was preaching, it was about our conduct before God, before one another, and before the world. So was our conduct right before God? I mean, the things that we do, the things that we say, need to be right before God so that we can be a blessing. And this morning I'm going to talk about being that blessing and how can we be certain that we are a blessing, okay? So if you'd like to turn with me please to John 15, we're going to start there. I'm not quite sure where we're going to end up but we're going to start there. It's, I've got four key points and then I've got some points that you might want to just make some notes of at the end. But the first point, it's so that we can be certain that we are a blessing, it's all about the Jesus in us. It's not about us. It's not about what we can do. It's not about how we can bless somebody. It's about how the Jesus in us can bless somebody through us. Amen? That's the difference between us trying to do it and God actually doing it through us. 
because people get blessed much more when it's Jesus blessing them than when we try to do it ourselves. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If you're not too sure about that, take my word for it. It's true. Hallelujah. Are you there? John 15, verse 4 to 5. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you or I unless we abide in him. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Turn to your neighbour and just say to them, without Jesus, I can do nothing. Praise God. Praise God. Much better that Jesus does it than we do it. Amen? Amen. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, we have to get out of the way, don't we, to allow him to come through. Remember what uh, John the Baptist said about himself when he saw Jesus. I must decrease so that he can increase. Amen? We need to take that word and apply it to ourselves. Amen? Because the self in us likes to, you know, doesn't it? Likes to rise up, likes to do its own thing. Well, we have to deny self, the flesh, whatever you want to call it, so that Jesus can arise in us. Amen? Hallelujah. It's knowing that it is the Christ in us that the old life has gone and the new has come. You have died. Have you had that revelation? I'm sure most of you have. But I'm just here this morning to, to remind you that you have died. When I say you have died, what I'm talking about is your old life. Who you were before you got saved. It's died, buried, crucified with Christ. It no longer exists. But Christ lives in you, the hope of glory. Amen? Amen. So reckon yourselves dead to, to yourself, to your old life. Amen? Reckon yourself having died with Christ and have risen with him to glory. Hallelujah. Why? Because he seated us in heavenly places. We're in the glory. Hmm. That takes a bit of revelation, doesn't it? That we're actually in the glory. The scripture tells us, look in Ephesians if you're in doubt. It says, we are now seated in heavenly places with Jesus. Well, then we're in the glory. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Come with me this morning. We're going somewhere. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. You are, and I am, a brand new creation. My old life has gone, and and a new life has started in Christ. That new life is all about Jesus and not about ourselves. Colossians 3, 9 to 10 says, Put off, you have put off the old man, and you have put on the new man. Therefore, you are accepted in Christ. You are accepted in Jesus. In other words, it's living a life in total submission to Jesus, the Jesus that's in us, that is what it means to be a Christian, expressing his life through us. Amen? So who is this Jesus? Because we talk a lot about Christ in us, don't we? We talk a lot about Jesus. We, we praised you. We were praising Jesus this morning. Amen? Hallelujah. So who is this Jesus? What is this all about? How do I know whether I'm expressing the life of Jesus or the life of somebody else? Keep with me. I'm going to tell you. Hallelujah. Jesus is compassion, is he not? If we read through the Gospels, we see how compassionate he was to those that were sick, those that were lost. He never had a wrong word for them. He always comforted them. He always healed them, didn't he? Amen? 
That's our Jesus. He's the one that has compassion. Hey, he had compassion on me. He had a compassion on each one of you when you got saved. His compassion was what reached out to you. His love. So he is full of compassion. That same Jesus lives in you. Amen? Amen? Amen. That same Jesus lives in you. Jesus is love. It was his love that drew, drew us to him. He was full of love. Amen? His love reached out into the world where he was. That same Jesus that's full of love because 1 John, in 1 John's Gospel, it talks about that God is love and Jesus is God. So therefore, that same Jesus that's full of God's love lives in you, lives in me. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. Jesus is power. We see that in the Gospels when he demonstrates his power by healing everyone that's brought to him. He is power, is he not? His power saved us from darkness and brought us into the light. His power healed us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. That same Jesus that's full of power lives in you and me. Amen. Amen? Amen? You have the power of Jesus inside of you. His power today is at work in your life, transforming you from glory to glory. His power is at work in you today, transforming you from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Amen. I think we're getting it this morning. Jesus is full of grace. For by grace we have been saved. His grace supports us. His grace enables us. Grace is the power of God to do the will of God. Amen. He is full of grace. Therefore, that same Jesus that's full of grace lives in you and me. He is merciful. He forgives our sins. Whatever we do, he forgives us. We see it in the Bible, in the Gospels, where he forgave. Amen? Amen. He forgives. He forgave us when we came to him and asked him for forgiveness. Amen? And we got saved. He cleansed us of all unrighteousness. He put all the sin behind us, behind him. And he forgave and forgot about our sins. Hallelujah. This thing's still echoing a bit, guys. Um, where are we? He is merciful. Therefore, that same Jesus that's full of mercy is inside of you and me. He is a servant. He came as the servant king, did he not? Hallelujah. And he served. He served his disciples by washing their feet showed us and them the way to serve, that he was not too high and mighty to do the lowly task. I think sometimes we think it's beneath us to do some of the servant tasks. Let me tell you, Jesus did the servant task, and that same Jesus lives in you and me. So therefore, we can also. Jesus is, and was, and still is, obedient to the Father in every way. He didn't come to do his own will, but to do the will of the Father, Scripture tells us. Amen? And in the garden, we see that he got into prayer and cried out to God. Did he not? Not my will, but your will be done. Take this cup from me, but not my will, but your will, he said, as he went towards the cross. He was fully obedient to the Father. That same obedient Jesus lives in you and me. Wow. 
we can be the obedient children of God that he calls us to be. Amen? We may not think so. We may think it's an impossible task. But the Jesus, the obedient Jesus that lives in us, enables us to be that, those obedient children of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Acts 1 verse 8, I'm just going to drop back a little bit, says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Scripture tells us that he has given us the power and we need the power of Jesus, the Jesus that lives in us, to fulfil the life that he calls us to. So, just finishing off this first part. It's a life of obedience and honour and love. It's about doing his will, just as Jesus always did the will of his Father, so we are always to do the Father's will. Jesus in us is in us to enable us to do that. It's not how much we do, but how we do it. It's how we respond in every situation. In other words, it's a lifestyle of obedience to Jesus that he's looking for. We belong to him and not to ourselves. We've been bought with a price. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says, For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So we have this lifestyle of obedience and as we apply these things to our life, we will be a blessing. Amen? Amen. That's, the, that's the key. It comes out of obedience. Point two. It's about being totally dependent upon him and not upon ourselves. Psalm 37, 3, 5, 3 to 5 says, Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. It's putting our trust fully in Jesus and taking our trust off ourselves when we try to do it or when we trust in the things that we think we know how to do things better than Jesus. It's putting our trust and our confidence fully in him, depending totally upon him. In that way, we will be a blessing because it will be his life that's flowing through us and not us ourselves. Proverbs 3 5 to 8 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Not some of your heart, not some of the time, but all of your heart, all of the time. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a great life. So we trust in the Lord with all of your hearts and lean not on your own understandings. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Wow. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. A great healing scripture. Wow. Health to our bones to our flesh and strength to our bones. Who wants strong bones? Yes. Come on. Amen. Strong bones. Well, what's it say? Trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understandings. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. What does that really mean? That means have... Um, Adoration for the Lord. Be aware of the Lord. Be aware of what he's asking of you. Do what he wants you to do. That's what fear of the Lord is. That he is there and you're conscious that you must do what he wants. It doesn't mean to be frightened of him. We've got a loving father. But it does mean to be aware. 
You know, there are consequences if we don't. That's what that's talking about. Hallelujah. Children of God. That's you and me, yes? Okay. Let's just talk about children and parents for a minute because that brings it down to earth, doesn't it? Hallelujah. We've all been children. Yes. Yes. Some of us have had a child and now got five grandchildren. Hallelujah. (laughs) Multiplication, that's called, for the kingdom. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Okay, so we're all children. Children depend on who? Parents. Parents. Okay. Children depend on their parents. What for? Everything. Everything. (laughs) She has the message this morning. (laughs) Children depend on their parents for everything. Turn to your neighbour and say, I depend on God for everything. I depend on God for everything. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just as the children depend on their parents for everything, we must depend on our heavenly parent, fathering heaven for everything. They go, children on earth come to their parents and say, can I have this? Can I have that? I did. They do. Amen. They do. Yes. Come on. They ask for everything. Whenever they want something, they come to you, do they not? Might just be breakfast. Might be a new bicycle. (laughs) Whatever it is, they have to come to you. Why? Because they don't have the means to get it for themselves yet. We need to be like the little children that come to our parents for what we want and check out, can can I actually do this as well? You know, can I go to this party or can I go and play with, you know, my friend next door? They always ask, do they not? Or they should do. (laughs) And if they don't, they need a little bit of education (laughs) in the nicest possible way, but they still need educating, that they need to check until they leave home and they're able to look after themselves. Why am I going down this road? Shouldn't be going down this road. But they need to check with their parents whether it's okay for them to do whatever they want to do. That's how it's supposed to operate. And that's how we're supposed to operate with our Heavenly Father. We must come to him and ask him, can I do this? Should I go there? Can I have this? Amen. It's very simple. But do we do it? That's the big question this morning. Do you come to your Heavenly Father and ask him for everything? Or do you just come to him when you've actually got a great big need that you yourself can't meet? Because that's not the way that we should operate. The way we should operate is even if we have the means, even if we have the capability, or even if we have the anointing, whatever it is, we should come to our Heavenly Father. Father, do you, can I have this? Do you want me to do this? Do you want me to go there? And ask, and then receive what it is that he's going to say to you. And then, oh, then comes the obedient part. Because sometimes he actually asks us and tells us to do something that perhaps we're not so keen to do. The flesh perhaps doesn't like it. In other words, he takes us out of our comfort zone and puts us in the water, or on the water, I should say, forgive me. Because we're all supposed to walk on the water and not sink. We sink when we take our eyes off Jesus. When we keep our eyes on Jesus, we will walk on the water walk in the area that God takes us that perhaps is a little bit uncomfortable. It's not comfortable to walk on the water. It takes faith. Amen? It will take faith for us to step out of our comfort zone and walk on the water. But first of all, we have to ask to make sure that's what God's asking us to do. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. Okay. So, 
Point three, it's about being a discipler, being a disciple of Jesus. It's about following Jesus, okay? And then we will know that we will be a blessing. The three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, say, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow Jesus. It doesn't say follow yourself, follow your parents, follow your teacher, follow your youth worker. It says follow Jesus. Amen? We are to be followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's great because he's the one to follow. He's the one that has all the answers. He's the one that knows best. So therefore, if we're following him, we will always... Listen to me very carefully. We will always do what is right. Amen? Very important. A disciple becomes like the one he is following. Who are you like? You are someone's disciple. I'll just let that register. You are someone's disciple. unless you're a really independent person, but you are someone's disciple. Why? Because you will be of learning from somebody. You will have reaped from somebody. You will have gained information. You will have gained something from somebody. So therefore, you are a disciple of someone. Is that not true? It's true of me. A disciple becomes like the one he is following. Who are you like? You are someone's disciple. Because your parents, school teacher, your trainer, somebody will have had influence upon your life. So who is influencing your life? Who is influencing you today, this week, last week, last month, last year, the year before? Who's been influencing your life? Really important, because whoever you're connected to, whoever you've been who you have allowed to influence you, has influenced your life in some way or other. The one that we want to influence us the most is Jesus. Yes? Why? Because he's the one that knows best. He's the one that's going to show us the way. He's the one that we want to influence us so that we can be a blessing. Because it's through Jesus that we're a blessing. Therefore, we need Jesus to be influencing our life. So who's been influencing your life? Who have you been getting alongside? Hopefully, somebody that has Jesus as their priority in their life. So that as they're in fact impacted by Jesus, because you're close to them, because you're allowing them to influence your life, The influence that Jesus has had on their life is rubbing off on you. That's how it works. Amen? Amen. So if you need more of Jesus in your life, if you need more of the influence of Jesus, find somebody who, who you can see Jesus in. Look at Acts 4, verse 13 for a minute. I love this scripture. This is one of my great scriptures that I really love. Why? Because we're just going to read it. Guys, have we got that or not? Oh, yes. Okay. Now, let me read it from my Bible. Acts 4, verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, first of all, recognise that they say, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. They saw something in their life. They saw the boldness, okay, and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. Okay? I love that. It fits me to a T. I mean, I did go to school, but I didn't go to college, and I didn't go to um, university or anything like that. But I did go to school, so I did learn a few bits and pieces. 
but I wasn't the most educated person on earth. I didn't have all these degrees after my name or anything like that. So that fits some of us here. Some of us have had the blessing of university degrees, which is fantastic because God could use that as well. He uses each one of us in the way he chooses to use us. Amen? So it doesn't matter where we come from or what we've done or how much education we've had. Why? Just listen to this. And perceive that they were uneducated and untrained men. They marvelled and they realised that they had been with Jesus. Jesus made the difference in their life. Jesus was the one that educated them. Jesus was the one that spoke through them. Amen? They had just preached, had they not? And thousands had got saved. Yet they were uneducated and untrained men. But they allowed the power of God, they allowed the flow of God to flow through their lives and preach through them. And that's what made the difference. That's what caused these folk to marvel at these two men. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay. It's operating in the spirit and not in the flesh. John 15, verses 7 and 8 say, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Amen. So as we bear that fruit, that fruit is what proves we are disciples of Jesus. Glory to God. And I'm not going to, I could go a long way in that one, but I'm going to call that there because I want to move on. Now, this next point is an interesting one because this was something God spoke to me about, that we need this in place to be a blessing. If this isn't in place, what I'm going to read to you now, then the enemy will be able to get at us. The enemy will be able to take us off track. The enemy will be able to stop us being a blessing if this isn't in place, okay? Turn, if you will, please, to Ephesians chapter 6. And we're just going to read through this passage of Scripture. Okay? This is really important. Because if this isn't in place, then the enemy will have a field day with your life. Okay? Okay? This should be in place in every one of our lives. And let me tell you now, we don't take this off. Okay? This is something that we have all the time. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Again, it's all about being strong in him and not in ourselves. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Okay? So we put on the armour so we can stand against the enemy. Amen? We have one that battles against us. We have one that doesn't want us to succeed. But hey, God, hey, 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 we have the victory in Christ. He's already defeated. But he's the biggest liar. And he tries to make us think he's still in control or can still have his way. No, he can only have his way to the degree we give him. You need to write that down. That was anointed. That came straight from the throne of God. He can only have his way to the degree that you allow him. He cannot have his way if you do not allow him to have it. Just cannot, because he's already defeated. He could not have his way with Jesus when Jesus was in the wilderness, when Jesus was tempted. He could not have his way. Why? Because Jesus knew the truth, and he spoke the truth to him, and the devil had to leave. Amen? That's why the word's so important, so we can speak the truth when we are under attack, because we do come under attack. We do come under things that the enemy tries to take us off track. But hey, we've got the word, we've got Jesus, and we've got the victory. Hallelujah. Okay, I need to move on. 
For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of the wickedness in the heavenly places. That's who we fight against. That's where our battle is. It's not with one another. It's not with other people. It's with the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all, all the fiery darts of the enemy, not just some of them, but all of them, uh, where are we? Um, getting carried away now. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, above the, uh, being able to, uh, able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Hallelujah. So we have the armour of God, and we're to put on that armour, and we're never to take that armour off. And I'm going to read another passage of Scripture which tells us that. But we have this helmet of salvation that protects our minds, protects our thoughts. Amen? We have the breastplate of righteousness which protects our heart and keeps us in the right place with God. We have the belt of truth, knowing the truth. The truth sets us free. So we should know the truth. And the truth that we know will set us free. So therefore we need to read what the truth says about us. We have the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, which we are to use. We use a sword in defence. We use a sword in attack. So we can use the word in defence, but we can also use the word to attack. Proclaim. Amen? Amen? We must use the word, because the word has power. And it's the power from the word that changes situations and changes what are desperate facts into victorious facts. It's the word of God that does that. It's not our, oh Lord, help me here, because the Lord's already helped you. He's already given you all that you need. You just need to exercise it and apply it to that situation and you will see the situation change. Oh, come on, that deserved an amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We have the shield of faith which quenches every fiery dart, every attack of the enemy. It quenches it, it deals with it. As long as we've got the shield up, guys, and are using our faith, don't let your shield down. Don't let your guard down. Keep it up. Use your faith. And when we're doing this, remember we do this so that we are a blessing. Hallelujah. And of course, he's fettered our feet with the gospel, the truth. Amen? And we can use that. It talks about feet, feet move, feet take us somewhere. We're to use what God has given us. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. So, I just want to read a scripture in Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 16. And I'm aware my time's running out very fast. So it was from that time on that half of my servants worked at construction. This is the story of them rebuilding the wall. They've come back from uh, being in bondage and what have you. They've come back to rebuild the wall. They're rebuilding the wall. And when they've been rebuilding the wall, the enemy has seen what's happened and has got concerned, got worried, and has started to think how he can come against and how he can stop the people of God building the wall. And this is what the scripture said. So it was from that time that half of the servants worked at the construction, while the other half held the spears, the shields, and wore armour, and wore armour. The leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Amen? 
They were behind them. They were standing guard. They had their armour on. They were standing against the attack of the enemy. Guys, when we're building the kingdom, the enemy will come against us. We have to stand against that, and we stand against that with our full armour on. And we don't take it off. They didn't take it off. They kept it on. The only time they took their clothes off was to wash. Otherwise, Scripture says they kept it on. So they wore it all time. In other words, they were defending and aware of the enemy's attack all the time. So must we be. But hey, unlike them, we now have the victory because we have the Jesus living in us. Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus. It's all about understanding that he is the power that's at work within you to be a blessing. Amen? Amen. Okay, finally. Remember that if you look in Ephesians, Colossians, Galatians, Romans, and some of the other places, it says, in all of them, that they're saying the same thing as Peter is saying, where I started in 1 Peter. Put to death, put off the old life. You have died, your old nature is dead, and embrace the new life in Christ. That's what it's about. Amen? I have 11 quick points I'm going to read, okay? It's no longer living for ourselves, but living a life of obedience for Jesus. It's putting others before ourselves. It's being in the world, but not part of it. 1 John 2, 15 says, Do not love the world. Don't be so afraid to go into the dark places. You take the light into the darkness and the light will disperse the darkness. You won't, but the light in you and the glory of God that's in you will do that. So don't be afraid to go where the enemy is. Take the battle to the enemy. Don't let the enemy bring the battle to you. Amen? I mean, that's how wars are won, by people going in and taking the ground. It's the same for us. If we want to take the ground for the kingdom of God, we've got to go in there, in where the darkness is, and take the light, take the glory of God, and see the darkness pushed out of that place and out of people's lives. And we do that by developing our relationship with Jesus and actually going and be a blessing and allowing the love and the power of God to flow through our lives. Hallelujah. It's spending time developing your relationship with Jesus in prayer. That is key number one. That is most important. It's abiding in the word, in the truth. It's being thankful for all God's blessings. Remember all your blessings. Amen. Remember the blessings we went through. Remember your blessings. Why? Because it builds your spirit up. It's keeping our guard up. It's not grieving the Holy Spirit. It's keeping our focus on Jesus and keeping Jesus central in our lives. It's being his ambassador. Turn to the person next to you and say, today I am an ambassador for Christ. Amen. An ambassador is somebody who represents, in our case, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's who we are. We represent our Jesus. Jesus is working in and through us to his glory and to his praise. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. I need to finish there. Praise God. My time's gone. Well and truly. Okay. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Yes. Yes, that's good. Hallelujah. We are so blessed. Amen. So therefore we can be a blessing. Let me ask you these questions and then I'm just going to pray and then I'm going to hand back to the guys. How is your conduct? Is it honourable before God? How are your responses? In other words, do you respond in the spirit or do you respond in the flesh? How are your responses when situations come up? Are you being a channel for blessing? Are you willing to let God strip away everything that is not of him so he can bless you and you can be a blessing?
Amen. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you this morning. Father, I want to thank you for your word that has touched my heart, that has touched my life, that has bring, brought new revelation and understanding of what it is to be a blessing. And Father, I want to pray for every single person in this room today, that Lord God, they take hold of what you've been saying today, and Lord, they move in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and are a wherever and in whatever they do in Jesus mighty name just reach out to the Lord now and just speak to the Lord yourself and just come before him and if you need to say Lord forgive me for not flowing in the anointing for not taking hold of who you are for not allowing you to flow through my life in the way that you've been talking about this morning just ask him to forgive you And he is faithful and just to forgive those that uh, confess with their mouths today. And he puts that all behind you. And he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, forgive me. Forgive us, Lord, when we haven't revealed who you are. When, Lord, we've been so caught up with our own agendas, with our own desires, and we haven't put you first, Lord. Forgive us. Forgive me, Lord. Hallelujah. And Father, I thank you that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness this morning. And Father, I pray for a fresh anointing upon everybody here, a fresh filling of your Holy Spirit, that out of their hearts and lives will flow rivers of living water in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.